Hello, good afternoon and welcome to CMC Markets and uh, this monthly non-farm payrolls webinar on Friday the 2nd of February and this preview of the January employment report out of the United States. First and foremost, before we get underway, a little bit of housekeeping rules with a risk warning, the obligatory risk warnings that we have to undertake um, for every one of these um, for every one of these events. Um, basically, what I'm going to try and do is show you where the key chart points are, the key levels that I'm looking at in the context of what the next possible move is likely to be um, in equity markets, in currency markets, um, as well as commodity markets. And it's certainly not been a particularly good week for the US dollar. But then again, it hasn't really been a last good six weeks for the US dollar. And I think, I think the big question that's really dominating investor sentiment at this point in time is whether or not the dollar can continue to fall. Now, ultimately, I think when you look to put a trade on, and what I always tend to do when I put a trade on, is to look at what's the lowest risk trade in terms of where markets are in the context of support and or resistance. And I think in this context, we've heard an awful lot about the fact that the dollar's weak and yet uh, US bond yields are hitting multi-year highs. If we look at the two-year yield, for example, that's around about 2.15, 2.16%. That's the highest levels it's been since 2008. The 10-year yield is back at levels last seen at the beginning of 2014 at around about 2.8%. Yet for all this strength in yields, the US dollar has continued to languish very near um, the lows of the last two or three years. And that's borne out by this dollar index chart, which I've got in front of you here right now. Now, those of you who are regular attendees of my webinars know that I place a great deal of of stock in the correlation between the dollar index and the euro dollar and the simple reasoning behind that is because of the constituents of the dollar index euro makes up around about 57 percent of that index so there's a very distinct correlation between the two and we've had another go at the 125 level in euro dollar and we've had another good go at the support that we saw in January around about 88.45, 88.50 on the dollar index. Now, the trend is quite clearly lower in the dollar index at this point in time. We can see that borne out by these progressively lower highs. But we are starting to find a little bit of support coming in around about this sort of area here. Around about, so this, this level is around about 88.40. So I think for me, in, in terms of the risk trade, then trying to sell the dollar when it's at three-year lows is a fairly risky trade. That's not to say that it wouldn't ultimately be successful, but you might get squeezed out on a significant bounce. We are at the lows of the week. We're also at the lows of the last three years. And while we have seen some rebounds and the rebounds are getting shallower, I would not be prepared to sell the dollar aggressively at these sorts of levels because on a risk-reward basis, it, it, the numbers don't really add up. Now, if we close below 88.45, 88.50, then obviously the risk-reward ratio shifts slightly towards further dollar losses. But when I look at the US dollar and the fact that it's languishing down near these lows, you have to ask yourself why that is happening. And ultimately, what we need to look at is obviously the political backdrop. The political backdrop for the dollar is a little bit uncertain. On the 8th of February, we could well get another US government shutdown because the funding extension that we heard, that we got at the end of January only basically funded the US government up to the 8th of February next week. So that could be a debate that dominates sentiment next week. Are you going to go short of the dollar ahead of that, ahead of a weekend? I'm not convinced that you will, given the fact that also euro dollar long positions are at their at, at our record levels. So that suggests to me, while everyone thinks the euro is going to go higher, that's not to say that they're wrong. It's all about the timing. So for me, the timing is key. If we look at euro dollar here, we can see that um, that 123.20 area has acted as a decent area of support for most of this week. Why? Because it was the previous highs. But also we've got the 120.170 area, which was also coincidentally 
um, the, the 50 percent retracement of the entire down move from the 2014 highs to the 2016 2017 lows so we're also near 126 which is a 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level as well so even if we get a move through 125 35 40 which is the previous highs we're still running into a big chart point around about 126 and I'm not convinced at this point in time that we've really got the sufficient momentum to really take us through that towards 130 so on a risk reward basis I'm a little bit uncomfortable being overly long at euros at these levels it's very much a case of buying the dips so if we get a dip back to around about 123.20 I'd probably be more than happy to buy euro dollar down there but not around about 125 the numbers for me the risk reward just does not add up it does not make sense so really and that's, that's really what this is all about I always trade what I see I look at where the key levels are and then basically weigh up the probabilities from there on in um, so looking at this would suggest to me that ultimately the upside in euro dollar is limited um, on the basis I think that um, if we look at where US yields are there's, it's likely that um, we could see a little a little bit of a pullback but also I think we could see a little bit of a rebound in the dollar let's face it we've closed lower for six weeks in a row the likelihood is we're going to close lower for seven weeks in a row but much will depend on obviously on how strong today's payrolls numbers are and in particular I think the the wages numbers I think the wages numbers are probably going to have a greater weight than the um, the actual headline payrolls number so let's look at what we're expecting this previous is wrong here this number here on the year on year number it should be 2.5 for the previous number if we get a number come in anywhere above 2.5 2.6 then that's likely to be dollar positive in the short term and probably push euro dollar back down similar sort of thing with respect to the pound against the dollar which is currently running into a significant area of resistance just below 143 one, around about 144 we can see that borne out by this chart here again regular viewers will know that I've been watching this 144 on the 200 week moving average for quite some time while the euro dollar is above its 200 week moving average sterling has as yet not been able to get above it we've also got a trend line resistance coming in from the 2015 peaks which currently comes in just above the level of where we are now so certainly in the context of the pound against the dollar we're finding decent support around about 139.80 why because that was the Fibonacci 38.2 Fibonacci resistance level on the way up now acting as support on the way down so again here I think if, if the pound does go up towards around about 1, 140, 142, um, 50, 142, 70 or, or towards this, this trend line then we could find a little bit of selling interest um, heading into this um, heading, heading into this number so a weak number you'll probably see euro dollar spike higher on the average earnings and cable spike higher towards 143 will it have the momentum to take us through to 144 on a Friday when the market is probably um, net short dollars it's debatable but again you know this is why we have stop losses if we look at the client sentiment on cable we can tell we can see that client positioning is 50 50 in terms of where the pound can go to next so there's no real guide there as to our clients are positioned it's an even split between the two if we look at euro dollar that split is probably a little bit more geared towards the upside and that's what makes me a little bit suspicious about being overly long of euro dollars at these significant market highs ultimately I think if you're heading into the weekend um, with a payrolls number coming up then you probably if you're being sensible want to pare down any euro dollar long positions so so as I say look at, looking at the headline numbers this is the number I'm interested in in particular the wages number headline number 180,000 you know if we come in at 200 210 again that's likely to be modestly positive for the US dollar a weak number around about 130 135 
Um, it is January. We did have a big freeze in January, so um, that may impact the headline number. It didn't impact the ADP number. That was very, very strong. But given the frozen weather that we saw in January, that could prompt a, a weaker headline number on the B from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. On the unemployment number, 4.1%. Um, no, no great, no great surprises are likely to come out of of that particular one. But in terms in terms of wages, I think the wages number is probably going to be the most eagerly watched number um, over the course of the next few months because we've had a number of stories out of the U.S. of big U.S. companies paying bonuses um, and giving pay rises. Starbucks, FedEx, Walmart, J.P. Morgan um, have all given their their staff significant pay rises. So in that context, a very strong payrolls number could push um, could push the dollar higher. Now, dollar yen. Now this is a bit of a strange one here because the dollar has been going up consistently against the yen all of this week, but not against the euro and against the pound. And I think that's a large part of that, particularly over the course of the last 24 hours, is because the Bank of Japan decided to put a cap on Japanese yields, and that has weakened again. The Bank of Japan has taken a unilateral decision to try and cap the yields on its 10-year, and as a result, that has weakened the yen, pushed the dollar up against the yen, and we could get a move through this 110.20 area. If we get a move through 110.20 on dollar yen on a decent um, wages number, then we, we could see it move back to around about 111. So dollar yen is acting slightly independently of all the other dollar majors, um, and that's usually, that's largely as a result of the actions of the Bank of Japan over the course of the past few weeks. They're trying to, or the past few days rather, they're trying to put a lid on the 10-year yield because it's rising too fast, too quickly, in response to some of the inflationary pressures that markets think is coming down the line. And we're certainly seeing it reflected in the ISM surveys. We saw that in manufacturing yesterday, 72.3 a five a six year high highest level in terms of input prices similar sort of story we're in respect of the pound so um, looking at the pound against the dollar at the moment it's around about 142 probably going to find a little bit of support around about 140 150 140, 160 top side around about 142 80 143 euro dollar 125 35 on the top side on the downside um, probably see a move back towards around about 124.20, 124.30. If we do break one through 125.50 on euro dollar, we could head back to around about 126, but I'll be surprised to move it much below that. On equity markets, going to quick do a quick summing up on these. The DAX has broken lower over the course of through its through its lows from the last few months. At the moment, it's finding a decent area of support um, just below. 12,800 uh, 12, level, which was this low here. But ultimately, what we're seeing here is a little bit of weakness. If the euro dollar comes off um, as a, in response to a strong number, then we could see that start to edge higher again. But we are starting to see evidence of a little bit of breakdown in equity markets. But looking at the S&P, there's a decent area of support coming in around about 2,800. Keep an eye on that level. If we do break lower, then we could see further weakness going forward. What is worrying for equity markets, and this is something that I did touch upon a little bit in my morning note, is the break below, two th below 7,600 and the FTSE 100. These series of highs here acted as support initially. We've now broken below that. We're touching the 200-day moving average. We could see a little bit of a pullback towards 7,500. The fact that we've broken lower on the FTSE is a little bit of a worry and could that be a leading indicator for further stock market declines and potentially drag US markets down as well. Dollar Swiss has broken a very key support level on a long-term basis and again that's symptomatic of a little bit of dollar weakness. This is the weekly chart here. Um, any rallies on Dollar Swiss are probably going to find resistance at 94.50. Right, it's time for the payrolls numbers. Let's sit back and absorb what the numbers are going to be. And here they come. 200,000 for non-farm payrolls. The previous number revised up to 0.6. The average 
the wages numbers ignore that. That is wrong. Average hourly earnings have risen 2.9% year on year. Very dollar positive number. It was right to be cautious about being long of euros. We've seen that come off. The dollar has rebounded 2.9% average earnings year on year, well above expectations. So the risk reward ratio or the risk reward that I was talking about earlier, trade what you see, the long dollar position, the short dollar position was not the right position to have. We were right to be cautious on it. And now the big question is, how much can the dollar rebound in response to those numbers? Because ultimately what that number will prompt, I think, is what's the, how, many, how many US rate rises are we going to see um, between now and the end of the year. At the moment, the market is pricing in between two and three rate rises. If if wages start to head towards 3% and move beyond 3%, then maybe there's a perception that we could see four rate rises this year. We've already got one priced in for March. Will we get one in June? Will we get one in September? And will we get one in December? These are all the um, Fed meetings that currently have a press conference. It's unlikely that we'll get more with four rate rises, but certainly I think markets will start to price that in. Dolly yen, looking at that 110.20 area I was talking about earlier, that's a very dollar positive number. Will that give us ammunition to move higher in terms of in terms of dolly yen towards around about 110.5, 110.70? We've already seen um, the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield move above 280 on that number. So US bond yields are already pricing in the prospect of tighter US monetary policy. That's likely to have a that's likely to have a negative effect on gold and a positive effect on the dollar. And yes the dollar is indeed starting to break higher. If we look at gold prices, gold prices are likely to leg lower. If we look at look at this here we can see that um, we are near multi month highs. So Again, the risk reward here is for to be long of dollars and short of gold, simply because the, the momentum dictates that um, the, the more likely move it is to be to the downside than to the upside. And it's a similar sort of story for commodity prices as well, which have started to to show have started to show a little bit of softness um, over the course of um, the next few days. We can see that here is this. What is this the beginning here of a head and shoulders reversal? We've got a we've got a left shoulder here, we've got a head here, formation of a right shoulder here with a neckline at 68.46. Right, I'm being asked where do you reckon these numbers take euro dollar? Well, ultimately I think I think we should we should test the downside. It, as long as we stay below 125, euro dollar should drift lower. So for me, I think ahead of the weekend. Decent payrolls numbers, wage growth at 2.9%, well above expectations of 2.6. That's a dollar positive story. It should put a floor under the dollar and under the dollar index and prompt a little bit of a short squeeze into the weekend in terms of the dollar uh, and, and push it higher against the pound, push it higher against the yen and push it higher against the euro. I don't think we're going to see a significant move lower on the euro dollar, but I think what it should do, I say it should do, is it should it should keep it below the highs so far of this year. I mean, if we look at euro dollar and what it's done over the course of the last week or so, and we are on the highs. Um, we're looking at yesterday's lows. Yesterday's lows were around about 123.80. Um, I would certainly expect to see a move back to around about 124.20 on the back of these numbers, as long as we don't get any short squeeze back through 125. But certainly, I think. As far as this particular number is concerned, I would expect euro dollar to start to trend back towards the 124 level. Hopefully that answers your question, sir. Um, does anyone, if there's anything else that uh, um, anyone wants me to cover specifically, just send me a question over. More than happy to um, answer a question on any currency pair that you see fit. In terms of the dollar CAD, obviously that's very positive for dollar CAD. It's going to weaken the oil price. It's going to push the US dollar higher against the Canadian dollar and push it back towards this 124 level. Again, we're in a downtrend here, but it has been starting to find a little bit of a base here around about the 120, 122 and a half area. 
and the strength of those, those numbers is likely to push the dollar up against the CAD back towards the 124 area, um, the 124.10, 124.20 um, over the course of the next few hours. With respect to stock markets, higher yields generally tend to mean, um, particularly this week, they're likely to put further pressure on equity markets and that certainly does appear to be the case in the case of the S&P 500. A decent set of wages numbers but no surprise there we've seen a push lower. Keep an eye on those um, lows that we saw early this morning around about 27.95. Um, if the market is unable to get squeezed higher on the US Open in the wake of those earnings numbers out of Apple, Amazon um, and Google last night then I think there's a good chance we could see a further test of the downside in equity markets and it does strike me as rather strange that given how we've had such a decent January that uh, February should be getting off to such a disappointing start but this is something that I've said before this chart does look a little bit cluttered so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of these um, drawing lines off but if we look at equity markets on a weekly basis, the weekly close here for the S&P and the Dow is going to be very, very important in the context of where we could potentially go to next. Um, so this candle here, this weekly candle could potentially be a key day or key week reversal. So where we close tonight, could be an important indicator of where we go to over the next couple of weeks or so. We're well overdue a correction, have been for quite some time now. We haven't really seen a significant down move on a weekly basis for over a year. So we're well overdue one. So we do need to be very, very mindful that at some point we're going to get one. And I think this could be the beginning. This could be the beginning of a correction. Markets have been gearing up for one for quite some time. Ultimately, an awful lot of people have got squeezed out every time they've tried to gear up for one. But I think there is a good chance that given um, what we've seen over the course of the past few minutes, we could be heading up for a little bit of a, a move lower or a consolidation, particularly in US markets, which are a little bit expensive. So if we close lower on the week, if we close below 2800, and that's what I'm really looking for in the S&P, um, then we could go for a little bit of a move towards 2700 and 2600. Um, we could certainly squeeze back to 2830, 2840, um, even if we do close below 2800 this week. But overall, I think there's a potential for a little bit of a momentum shift, a little bit of a consolidation over the course of the next few days. Right, okay, I've been asked a question about the platform with respect to chart saved. You only get that chart saved option when you save a chart and put some lines and what have you. So when you first open a chart, you don't necessarily have that option available if you've never opened it before. But once you've saved um, various options to that particular chart. So let's take, for example, I'm going to look for something in the library, um, currency pair or something like that. If I can actually um, get it to come up. There we go. So let's let's choose something like um, AUD slash USD. So we can do that. So the chart option is not available. But as soon as, as you open the chart and then you put technicals on it or you put the chart type on it, change it to a candle, maybe put a oscillator on it underneath change that like so and we put the oscillator on there once it's in a watch list and it needs to be in a watch list for you to be able to save it if it's not in a watch list it won't save so you need to create your own watch list copy it in there uh, and then it should save the chart along with all your various bits and bobs like so so I'm going to open a 
trying to think of something that I don't have on my main on my main list of stocks here because at the moment what I've got here is everything has a saved chart and this is what the squiggly line means you all have saved analysis with respect to your chart so I go here and I've got knocky stocky got the chart but I've also got the, ch the saved chart here as well so if I do something on the line of maybe let's try Swiss yen like so drag that in there to my watch list I've already got it in there so which is why it's not done that so we'll try something else let's try Kiwi in do that okay so we can see from Kiwi in that I've just got the option for the chart on its own. What I then do is open that chart, put my analysis on it on the bottom, confirm, maybe do a little bit of line drawing if I want to, like so. Close that, go back to Kiwi Yen from the watch list and the settings are saved like so so it has to be in a watch list and it's fairly easy to create a watch list you go to the watch list option and you create a new watch list so that's how you save the chart and then whenever you go back to that watch list and you open a new chart your analysis is all saved any other questions um, ladies and gents anything that I haven't covered I know I know uh, Kiwi Yen, not Kiwi Yen, Sterling Kiwi is quite a favourite of some of our uh, customers over there. So I'll have a quick look at that before someone asks me about it. And again, a few weeks ago I talked about Sterling Kiwi being potentially positive, likely to remain so. Um, it's still looking fairly, fairly bullish on the basis of these daily candles here. Also important, I think next week, we'll have a quick look forward forward look to next week it's Bank of England rate meeting but also it's the inflation report and the inflation report is going to be very important in the context of expectations about whether or not we get further Bank of England rate rises later this year and in particular it's going to have a particular bearing on Euro Sterling. Euro Sterling has got a very very strong base around about 8690 we can see it on this daily chart here again um, this is something that I talk about regularly in my morning note which gets posted on the website um, big support at 86.90 we've seen progressively lower highs we are on a little bit of a short squeeze higher at the moment we probably could well head back towards around about 82 88.10 88.20 but there is I think significant interest to sell euro sterling in and around those levels and as such I'm still bearish on euro sterling on rallies back towards and back towards around about 8820 and then obviously above that to this trend line resistance through here at the moment momentum is positive while above 8690 if we do break below 8690 however it's very much a case of watch out below because at the moment we do appear to be consolidating in a slightly tighter range one thing this weekly chart does tell me is that there's significant buying interest down there but at the moment there's also a reluctance to take it significantly higher so we're a bit range bound where euro sterling is concerned what else am I looking forward to next week well obviously we also have the RBA we have the latest Reserve Bank of Australia rate meeting and again in that context Aussie dollar big resistance up around 8130 um, but we have broken below this support here at around about 7970 79 so there is potential for the Aussie dollar to drift back towards around about 7920 or even 7880 as the dollar rebounds I think the Aussie dollar is going the RBA is going to be very uncomfortable with the Australian dollar at current levels so there's a distinct possibility that they'll be mindful of being too hawkish when it comes to the interest rate outlook 
So keeping an eye on Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar as well. We have the RBNZ um, also next week. And that's likely to be a key driver in terms of the New Zealand dollar. Global services PMIs are out on Monday. Um, particularly the UK services PMI is going to be particularly interesting given the weak construction number that we saw this morning. But again, it's the inflation numbers here that I'm particularly interested in. And again, input prices are starting to move up. So the big question there and the inflation report, given the increase that we've been seeing in input prices, is will Mark Carney talk up the prospect of maybe one or two interest rate rises this year, given how well the UK economy is actually doing relative to how it was forecast to be doing this time last year. Let's not also forget that the pound is 18% higher now than it was this time last year. So that should actually, against the dollar that is, that should help push down, um, that should push down inflation expectations going forward. Okay, so... I'm probably going to wind this up now, ladies and gentlemen, unless anyone has any other questions they wish to ask me. Um, we do have another webinar on Monday at 12.15 with my colleague David Madden, so tune in for that if you want to get a preview for the week ahead. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you all for joining me today and uh, wishing you a, a pleasant weekend. Thanks very much for listening.